yeah? She's pure Chinese. So in reality, it makes that 50% Hawaiian, 50% Chinese, okay? Then moving on to mom, we came to the conclusion that your great-grandparents are pure Hawaiian, okay? Giving your grandfather 100%. On grandma's side, yeah, she's pure Chinese. So in reality, it makes dad 50% Hawaiian, 50% Chinese. Giving 87 and a half for your grandmother uh, and 75 for daddy, making you 59.375%. That gives me a 132nd English and pushes me out of the 60% Hawaiian. Isn't that too bad that That's we have terrible. to? That's terrible. Yeah. But you know more English than I have. <laughs> I, really? I have none at all. Oh, okay. Not one drop. <laughs> I filled up the form. Don't be frightened. And I have no right to submit it. I just wanted to see how far back I could go, because it never occurred to me. So your background okay. is? I'm Russian. I'm exactly half Russian. Oh, and other half? And that's why I thought I would, might make an application suggesting that maybe one of my ancestors was a technician who built the Russian fort. Jacob has just been told he is now a legally entitled Hawaiian. I got it all done very well. Yeah, it has. It's nice to meet you. Congratulations. You look, you, look, you look strangely Hawaiian to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Actually, oriental they, blood they, is they said after the haircut I look like a criminal, but... <laughs> Not a bit. I'm yeah. jealous of you. I've got too much hair. <laughs> And I've got no claim. <laughs> <laughs>
would-be Hawaiians seeking proof of their past do not have an easy task. Inmates' names were often changed to protect their loved ones. Now this is the biggest of our cemeteries. Thousands of unmarked graves. Because it was considered such a disgrace to be named as a leper that nobody would admit they had a disease in their families. So now people are trying to claim, you know, their Hawaiian ancestry so they qualify for the land. Well, I'm looking for my grandmother's grave. When did she come in? Uh, I'm not sure. What was her name? I don't know. Today, the sheriff often finds himself showing people around who are searching for evidence of those very relatives. But Marx has relatives right. here too. Two generations of his family were incarcerated here before him. Yeah, this is our family plot right here. Ooh, yeah. Be careful. I've got it. Yes, yes I see you haven't changed the name. Yeah, the newest one is my brother. Next to him, my dad. Leprosy, which is an abstract word about a certain disease, is not talked about. It's now called Hansen's disease. Right. But there must be hundreds of Norwegians named Hansen who feel the same about their disease now that it's been identified with them as That's leprosy, true. which was identified with nobody at all but little bells in the Bible. Right. Well, uh, to be honest with you, almost everyone here says Hansen's. I'm the only one who says leprosy. Yes. I'm a leper, I'm not ashamed of it. No, absolutely. They're trying to cover it. To me, giving it a new name is trying to cover it up. It means you got something to hide, something to be ashamed of. Western diseases and intermarriage have drastically reduced the mathematically pure Hawaiian population to around 5,000. But language endures, and a resurgent affinity with the past is troubling these paradise islands. Back in Honolulu, the parcel this young man is handling so cautiously contains human bones. Bones on Hawaii are venerated as never before as evidence of an unattainable past of glory, independence, and self-expression. Bones which must be laid to rest far at sea in a state-funded ritual. Burial practices of Hawaiians was such that they buried everywhere. They lived, they buried in the backyard, they buried in the mountains, in the beaches. Um, nobody anticipated this development here. Um, my building, I live right over there in that top of the red top, they found burials when they built that building. The law that established our program was a result in Maui of over 1,000 remains, native Hawaiian burials just being moved for a hotel. And Hawaiians came out and said, what are you guys doing? Each new building site produces a fresh crop of bones. Each time, by law, all building must stop. Hey, Gail, we're looking right at the right place, aren't we? It's the job of the burial boys to call in the Honolulu Police Department if there are suspicious circumstances. When you find human remains, we ask that any work has to stop. Oh, we, then... yeah. If something looks suspicious, then HPD gets in touch with their, uh, with their medical examiner and, and sure, so on. Sure, sure. And if, it, if it's ours, we can pretty much tell. How did they become what they are? I'm an attorney, and my parents said, hey, go to law school so you won't have to be a grave digger. And I went to law school, and now I'm a grave digger. <laughs> and I'm as happy as I can be. <laughs> it's something that we find very spiritually rewarding. I can't think of any other job we'd rather be doing. Okay, so today we commit the remains of our kupuna back to the ocean. And we ask for Kepo's blessing. I think for Hawaiians as a whole, you know, when we take care of our ancestors, it gives you a cultural foundation upon which to build. There's an acknowledgement of, of the connection between you and the past 
and that is something I think Native peoples and Native Hawaiians, they know this, you know, inherently from our upbringing. You cannot know where you're going if you don't know where you've been. It's a moving thought. And yet for some people along Mark Twain's hundred-year-old route, the past is not a happy place to dwell. Unless, of course, the future shows even less promise. A beautiful death indeed. Next stop, Australia. <laughs> 